In today's video, we have an absolutely huge hurricane season update, kind of tropics update here, as we have a lot of activity going on out there in the Atlantic. And to make matters worse, all of it is happening pretty much in the Western Atlantic, a lot closer to home here. And one in particular poses a threat to the East Coast. Uh, really, the two of them, we can't rule out anything so definitely uh, both of them are a threat to a certain extent um, and then we have a major category four hurricane out there just to the east of Bermuda which thankfully is expected to move out to sea but that is a monster storm out there that we're going to talk about as well in this video as well we're going to be talking about massive improvements versus even just yesterday's video on the precipitation situation in the eastern United States. We have areas that really need precipitation now popping up on some model guidance looking above average as far as precipitation. So huge drought relief. And then also still signs of colder air as we move into early October. So let's take a look here at these tropics first things first. We have the two areas of disturbance circled here. The arrow is kind of indicating where they're expected to move. This orange one is the one that we're concerned about mostly for the East Coast. And both of our major models that we'll see later do show this one striking. Actually, I think both of them show this striking into North Carolina uh, as at least an organized tropical system. So to some extent... Uh, but the GFS model does have a much worse storm striking these areas, and very likely this would at least bring impacts to South Carolina and Virginia, maybe even further northward into the mid-Atlantic. So let's talk about percentages real quickly. This one only had a 20% chance of development over seven days as of yesterday. This now has a 10% chance of development over the next two days and a 50% chance of development over the next seven days so it, this one has jumped by over 30 percent there on that seven day outlook and the red area here again the one that poses less of a risk just because of track to the east coast but again nothing can be ruled out but this one does have a stronger possibility of being out to sea this one is a 30 percent chance of development over the next two days and an 80 percent chance of development over the next seven days so it's looking fairly likely that we could have First off, Gabrielle, which is the hurricane that's out there, another tropical system that develops here very likely, and then it's a 50-50 shot that we see this one develop here as well. So there is a pretty good chance that we could see three tropical systems out there, again, in the western Atlantic. That would be just crazy activity after the very huge lull in activity that we've seen as of late. So let's take a look at our hurricane real quickly, and then we're going to move into some model guidance and take a look at what these ones are expected to do. But I want to take a look at this hurricane because this one was originally only anticipated to be a weaker hurricane. As of yesterday, it looked likely that it would be a Category 3, and now we can see that it is a Category 4 hurricane. And look at that thing. In size, it is not the biggest hurricane I've ever seen. Uh, but it does have a really, really well-defined eye wall there. Just really, really stunning storm. Uh, and this one is thankfully, this is really good news, but we can see Bermuda right here. It is really just outside of the outer, outer band. So they might be getting some surf, high surf. They might be getting some winds, but thankfully they are basically coming away from this one unscathed for the most part, which is incredible news for them, which basically makes this storm about as innocent as an Atlantic major hurricane can be. It is not expected to impact any land masses as a major hurricane, which is incredible news. And really you have to go pretty far to the east to find even some remote islands that it could impact there. Uh, but even then, it looks like it's going to track to the north of there as either a Category 1 hurricane or tropical storm. So this is just uh, a stunning, really incredibly intense storm that, again, is not expected to impact anybody, thankfully. So let's take a look at some of that model guidance now. And first things first, going over the 6 to 10 day temperature outlooks, this goes from September 28th through so October 2nd from the National Weather Service. We do anticipate still a warmer period from coast to coast here, with the exception of the lower four corner states for this time frame. And they still have the very long range looking coast to coast warmth, but I think at some point around the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th of October would be around the time frame to be expecting things to flip much cooler. So I suspect this time frame could switch from this coast to coast warmth look to a warmer look out west 
and a bit cooler for a lot of these areas, especially as we move the next couple of days, I would expect to see this changing in a big way. Looking at the past 20 days, which will be uh, basically from the 2nd of October on till now, uh, so we are missing those first couple of days. We still have blues holding on for dear life here in these eastern areas. Uh, you know, if you were to add those first two days, this would look bluer because those were a cooler couple of days. But uh, definitely looks likely that this is going to end around normal unless we see some sort of cooling trend in, you know, before the end of the month, which isn't looking too likely. Looking at our storminess, <clears throat> and again, we're going to be focusing in on the kind of up rising and upsurge of precipitation within this area overall but also be watching for a tropical disturbance that kind of moves in and again strikes into north carolina i want you to watch for that because that is a pretty big factor here and that is that again 50 percent chance area the more south western area of tropical development and what we're going to see here over time is we're getting this kind of repetitive fairly stormy pattern that is now happening over the next couple of days uh, through the, the midweek into the late week. So this is really good news for a lot of you that need the precipitation. And this is by the time we're reaching close to Sunday the 28th. This is right during the late evening of Saturday the 27th. And this is actually your tropical disturbance here just to the northeast of the Bahamas. Um, and keep watching because this remains a relatively weak system, but it does climb towards maybe tropical depression or tropical storm status. This is a weaker low. But this is high precipitation. Um, this could certainly be a pretty impactful system. Even at these lower intensities, we see heavy rainfall, some wind in there. Um, that is a tropical system of sorts. And then actually, you might not be able to see it, but right to the east, basically right on the edge of the map here, we do see that what looks to be a hurricane from that other area of potential development. So this particular model shows all of them developing. And then we get into the cooler pattern here. We get this kind of upswelling of warmth in the central states. This causes a reactionary uh, cool down off to the east here. So we get kind of a interesting jet stream flow. Something like that is what we're seeing. And as we keep going, that does reach into the eastern states. We actually get another one as well at the really tail end of the model. We get a low developing here across the lower Ohio Valley. A little bit of a cold front, warm front look here. And this would be a pretty intense system, likely the chance for thunderstorms and severe weather if it occurred this way. Of course, this is in the long range to take it with a grain of salt, but that could bring even more precipitation and more cooler air with it as it moves in. The GFS model, we're really going to want to focus in on this tropical system. So again, be watching that area, that same area. And we're going to see a very, very similar solution, except this one intensifies much, much more greatly down to a 986 just to the northeast of the Bahamas there. This is, again, between Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. And then we can see uh, right as we reach towards about Monday the 29th, we do see this striking eastern North Carolina. But whereas the European model kind of just brought it in, <clears throat> The only difference is we're going to see this GFS model just kind of rejected out off to the east, which would be uh, less impactful track wise. But because of the intensity of this one, this would be a far more intense solution for eastern North Carolina, in particular the Outer Banks, if that ended up happening. We actually see another tropical system towards the end of the model run in the Gulf. So these models have been trending at tropical activity being much, much more frequent here uh, through the late September into early October time frame. So we're going to be watching for continued and, and more threats overall than we already have been talking about. Uh, really going to be a big discussion point here for us. Now looking at the total precipitation, we're going to look at the anomalies in a minute, but probably based on this already, you can tell a lot of these areas, especially the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, Northeast here, are looking much, much better uh, than what we've seen over the past few days i mean this is just a lot lot higher here looking at the anomalies look at this we have above average precipitation for much of these eastern areas that really really need it again the mid-atlantic and northeast in particular this model is showing the greens which are anywhere from a fraction of an inch to an inch to maybe even about two inches above average the blues which we see scattered about all in there is about two inches or more above average for a lot of these areas in here which is just really going to help 
to alleviate some of those drought like conditions if this can occur like this i really hope it does because we've been just cheering for this for so long guys let's watch the temperatures again we're going to be warmer for a while we do get a little bit of a cool down that brings us closer to normal in the eastern states here starting around that same weekend saturday the 27th into sunday monday uh, and then we warm up briefly uh, before we get a more major uh, cold front come through and this is the second one that's on the way as well pushing eastward now this is the less cold of the two models yesterday was the other way around but today the gfs model is actually the cooler model so let's watch this one play out we're going to get a very very similar pattern except for the fact that we get a much more major i would call this an arctic blast coming down it's more of a backdoor one as well it's coming from more of the east than normal so we're seeing something like this as the flow again 10 to 15 degrees below normal in those greens purely above normal out west so this is a classic positive pna pattern and this just allows for a lot of cooler air to pour in this would be very fall like to start out october if this gfs model was correct and we do stay relatively cool we do get this low that forms evidently uh, over the upper midwest here so we get a cold front warm front we can see on the temperatures so warmer air does start to surge in the east again but this is only happening because of this low and this low is going to bring the cooler air back again so we would be in more of a roller coaster up and down back and forth type pattern in this scenario definitely interesting though and definitely something we'll be watching for you can see it approaching the eastern states here towards the end of that model run so clearly tropical activity is trending up precipitation is trending up which is incredible news and cooler weather uh you know compared to normal so not just obviously that it's going to be cooler once we move into october but cooler than normal for early october weather is becoming more and more likely based on this model guidance uh, for that first to second week of october so we're going to continue to watch for that daily be sure to subscribe we upload every single day you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video